Okay, this is a short presentation to look at how to compute the steady state probabilities of a transition matrix. Now, this is a transition matrix that I used in a previous example. So in the previous example, I used this code here to set up the transition matrix. So I'll just call it, I'll just stick with the name I've used before, before zone transition. So essentially what I do here is I have this line of code written in and I just press run there. There it goes again. And that brings up my transition matrix. Now, to find the steady states of a transition matrix, what you would do is normally set it up as a Markov chain object and use the Markov chain R package. The command there is steady states just to compute that. But what I want to do here is just actually sort of uh, to take this apart a little bit. Now, it's very important here to know the linear algebra behind it, okay? So this is the formula here. This is the steady state formula. Pi here is the 1 by n steady state equilibrium rho vector. So it's a 1 by n vector. P is the transition matrix that we have above, and I is an identity matrix that we're going to use shortly. Now this is the main matrix, or the main expression here. Pi times P is equal to pi. So pi will be unchanged by P if you multiply it through. So that's the fundamental thing. What we can do on the right-hand side is multiply pi, the steady state equilibrium, by the identity matrix I. Now, so what we have here is pi times P on the left-hand side equals pi times I on the right-hand side. Now, P and I have the same dimensions, n by n. So what we can do here is re-express the whole thing as pi times P minus I, okay? And then let that equal to zero. The important thing here is that zero is a column vector of zeros. So it's not just a scalar it's actually a column vector of zeros. So I've just moved down there a little bit to confirm the notation. I'm still being a little bit cavalier because I'm going to have the zero vector as both a row vector and then a column vector. So just actually to start off here, it's a row vector up here. So this is n, pi times p minus one is one by n times n by n matrix, which will result in a one by n matrix of zeros, okay? So that's a one by n matrix of zeros, that bold zero there, it's a vector. So what we're gonna do here is use transposition to rearrange as a standard system of linear equations in the form AX equals B. So this is the type of thing that you probably should have learned in linear algebra, A times X. A is a n, should be an n by n vector, square, square matrix. X should be an n times one column vector and B should be an n times one column vector. Okay, so that's what we have here. Uh, just to be clear, actually, up here, zero is a row vector and down here it's a column vector. I should really have zero transpose here as well. But it's, so that, that is correctly the case, zero transpose, if I was to follow the notation consistently. Okay, so forgive me for that. Now, so, so far so good. So we have a system of linear equations here. So let's see if we can solve that. So what we're going to do is set everything up in R. I'm going to use the transition matrix we have previously used in R. Now you might sort of spot something that you're thinking, I'm forgetting. I'm deliberately forgetting it. Okay, I'll come to that shortly. So the first thing we're going to look at is how to set up an identity matrix. So here N is 3. So we're dealing with 3 by 3 matrices. P is a 3 by 3 matrix. So N has to, or I has to be a 3 by 3 matrix. And... So what we're going to do there is just use the command diag, and that will just give us our identity matrix there. Okay, that's fine. So we'll leave that alone. I'm just going to comment that out because it just takes up a bit of room. Now, first off, we have P and then minus I. Okay, so this is P minus I. The transition matrix there is called P, and I is the diagonal 3. Okay, that's how we set that up. But what I want to do also is get the transpose of that, so that's why I put it in brackets there. So that's the transpose command for P minus I. Okay. So there we have it there. That's what the transpose of P minus I will look like. Great. Now I suggested we're going to run into problems. And this is the problem we're going to run into. It sort of highlights it here. So what I want to do here, so I essentially just to identify this problem here. Essentially what's going to happen there is that is an extremely small number and essentially what it's telling us is that the determinant is zero. 
So for our matrix, it's actually non-invertible, which is to say a system of linear equa equations will not work, okay, will not solve. So we're sort of stuck for the time being. Usually what you would do is use solve A and B, where we using the formula discussed previously, AX equals B, and that would do it. But it's not going to work in this case. So let's just see how that would look, the system of linear equations, okay, if we were to use it, okay. So the determinant of A there, actually I've covered that already. The determinant of A is zero, so that won't solve, okay. So we're stuck. So what we're going to do here is use an additional piece of information. Use the fact that the sum is of the steady state matrix, the steady state vector actually, is equal to one. Okay, and that's something we can always use. So that's something we can incorporate. So let's just rerun P. So what I'm going to do here is both to A and to B, I'm going to add in the details here. So it's actually, there's three states. So pi 1 plus pi 2 plus pi 3 is equal to 1. Okay, so this would be the, for the A vector, that'd be uh, add in another row, 1, 1, 1. Okay, let's look at that. That's fine. You notice it's no, it's no longer a square matrix though. And we're gonna set up B uh, with the additional uh, value one there. So let's have a look at that. So what our system of linear equations would look like now, okay? So that should help things. Now, so I have to solve this, but you notice that I have a different command there, qr.solve. Let's just check what that's about first. So what I'm gonna do here, firstly, is go back to just using solve. So if I run that, I hit a problem. It must be a square matrix, okay? So that's why I would use this other command, qr. Now this does qr decomposition. What I'm getting at really here is that you should really have a good grasp of linear algebra here. Okay, so let's run that again, and there we go. So 0 0.388, 0 0.333, and 0 0.277. So that is actually the steady state probabilities that we should be getting, okay? So we leave it there.